Hey, what is going on guys? I'm Tiger with Tiger of Comedia back with another Dokkan battle video. So every once in a while, I'll get a fairly new player asking me on a stream or maybe in the comments of a video about whether or not they should summon on a certain banner or which banners they should be saving their stones for and so on and so forth, right? And of course, I totally, totally understand this because I used to be there. Honestly, when I first started playing the game about two and a half to three years ago, I was the guy who would summon on every single banner that came out and there were definitely a few banners that I went really really deep on that I really should not have and I still regret it to this day but I mean to be fair I still do that right now but at the very least when I do it now I know that I'm making a mistake whereas back then I had no idea what the hell I was doing so anyways in this video I thought it might be kind of helpful to some people out there to make a little guide uh, breaking down all the different kinds of banners in the game giving you guys my opinions about if they're good value whether or not they're worth your stones and also just generally how each of these banners work so yeah that's kind of the idea oh two things before i get started though one is that i will be saying the word value probably a lot in today's video so get prepared for that. And number two is that everything I say in today's video is my own personal opinion. You guys are totally free to disagree with me, but if you do disagree, try not to get too upset because it's really not that serious. And uh, feel free, of course, to let me know in the comments down below where our opinions differ and we'll be good to go. So without further ado, guys, let's dive in now and check out the first type of banner we're going to talk about, which is your general Dokkan Festival banner. Now, real quick, I'll give you guys some numbers about uh, the rates that apply to basically, I want to say 99.5% of the banners in this game. So essentially all of them, there are a few exceptions out there, but most of them will have a 10% SSR rate, 5% for featured units, and 5% for non-featured units. So for this banner, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 featured SSRs and a ton ton of unfeatured ssrs for a total of let's see a hundred and oh no so seven featured and 191 unfeatured ssrs and obviously that means that your rates of pulling a featured ssr are much higher than pulling any specific unfeatured ssr in the pool even though it doesn't always feel like that when you're summoning which is kind of unfortunate but it is what it is. So anyways, let's talk about these Dokkan Festival banners, guys. They will usually bring in a brand new Dokkan Festival exclusive unit into the game. And as the name implies, these units will only be available on Dokkan Festival banners. And in general, guys, these new Dokkan Fest units are very, very good. I mean, of course, there have been some exceptions in the past, but generally speaking, they're absolutely top tier. The ones that aren't LRs are some of the best non-LRs in the game. And then the ones that are LRs are just straight up some of the best units in the game, period, right? So I would say most of them are definitely worth going for. And as far as the rest of the featured pool goes, I mean, this one was actually considered one of the more underwhelming uh, Dokkan Fest banners in a while. And even then, I think it's still pretty freaking solid. I mean, this Namek Goku, of course, is just insane, but the AGL Goku is still very good. The Tech Frieza is still very good. So is this Int Angel Golden Frieza. This guy can still output some very decent damage. And this uh, Tech Golden Frieza, once he gets an Extreme Z Awakening on Global, is top tier as well. And even this AGL Final Form Frieza, who is new with this banner, He's not a Dokkan Fest exclusive, but he's still an extremely good attack all unit. So all the featured units in this pool, I think, are still very good. And like I said, this was considered one of the more underwhelming banners, right? Now let me show you this physical Piccolo banner. I think this was on JP a couple months ago. And this one was oh, very, very good. I mean, as you can see, we got the new Piccolo. There's also a new Nail. And then there's also the transforming Vegeta, 
There's the AGL Metal Cooler, SSB, Vegeta, AGL, Turles. There's some of the best category leads in this entire game. And this STR Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta is one of the best tanks in the game. So extremely, extremely high value banner there. And uh, judging by these two banners I showed you, there's definitely some variance in the value for Dokkan Fest banners. But I would say on average, um, these banners are quite good value for your stones. And you shouldn't feel too bad about summoning on any of them. But the one thing that, of course, you have to think about is whether or not you actually want the unit, like whether or not you like the character. Like, for example, for me, even though I love Piccolo, you know, he's, he's, he's great. He's a great character and all that stuff. He's not like the most hype character to me. So even though his banner's pretty good, I'm probably not going to spend a ton on the banner because I already have all these units except for this guy. And, um, you know, like, I still think it's a good banner to summon on but I'm not gonna go too deep whereas for another character maybe like I don't know a new Android 18 or something I'm kind of weird like that I really like Android 18 so if there was like a new Dokkan Fest Android 18 I would go super hard right so that's a bit of a more subjective factor depending on whether or not you actually want the characters or whether or not you like them and there's also the consideration of whether or not you have a lot of these characters, right? So for some people, this banner, even though they're some of the best Dokkan Fest exclusive units in the game, um, it might not be a hype banner because they have a lot of the units, right? So that's kind of a personal thing. But uh, as far as Dokkan Festival banners go, I would say good value. Don't feel too bad about spending stones on them. Obviously, don't go too crazy. Spend within your means. But depending on the banner we're talking about, I mean, you could easily go, you know, 500 to 1,000 stones plus, depending on the level of whale you are, right? So yeah, Dokkan Fest banners, very good value. And then if we take it a step higher, we have the dual Dokkan Fest banners. And they're very similar in a sense to regular Dokkan Fest banners, except there's two of them. So obviously the one we got most recently on Global and JP um, was for the AGL LR Gohan and the Int uh, LR Cell. And Dokkan Festival exclusive LRs, by the way guys, as I said a second ago, are some of the best units in the game, period. And uh, the banners themselves are also insanely, insanely valuable. Um, I would actually go as far to say that dual Dokkan Fests and dual Dokkan Fest banners are the best possible value for your stones, period. Actually, you know what, you know what, there is one exception later on, but that one exception is a very, very rare occurrence that we really can't predict uh, when those will happen. So as far as like things that we know will happen every single year that are a regular occurrence, dual Dokkan Fest banners in this game are the best possible value for your stones for a number of reasons. Number one, the new units that come with the Dual Dokkan Fest for the time are always some of the best units in the game, all right? Like for example, um, if I remember like about a year ago or so, or maybe a bit longer than that actually, but Tech Vegito Blue and STR Rosé, they were a Dual Dokkan Fest that was very hype, and those two guys are actually still two of the best units in the game, so imagine back in the day when they first came out, how insane they were, right? And uh, of course, the AGL LR Gohan and the Int LR Cell are two of the best units in the game as well, even though some people like to clown on them, like to make fun of them for being super restrictive with their active skills. Regardless of that, they're still amazing units, and uh, that's one reason, of course, to summon, because the new units are good on these dual Dokkan Fest. But also, there's usually also some kind of like discount that comes with these celebrations as well. So for these ones on JP, I think it was just the regular 3 plus 1, which is still good, right? You're getting three full price multis and the fourth one for free. And then on Global, we got the same thing, except for the first three multis, we got additional discounts where every multi was between, I think, 30 to 40 stones. And the first three multis were only like 100 stones as opposed to 150. And then we also got the free multi for the fourth one. So. Uh, yeah, Global got some additional discounts, and sometimes on Global, we even get tickets for doing multis on these banners to summon on a separate ticket banner with the same featured units, so some more additional free summons on top of that. So just for all those reasons and more, these are great, great value for your stones. I didn't even talk about the featured units. So aside from the main featured guy, the new unit, uh, the other featured units, are usually also absolutely top tier units, some of the best units in the game. As you can see, guys, we got the transforming Vegeta, who will not load. There we go. We also got uh, AGL Gogeta, 
This guy again, who, like I said, is still very good, even though he's been featured quite a few times. Uh, physical MVP 17 is amazing. Tech Vegito Blue, amazing. This guy, I mean, it, he, he's still good. I, a lot of people like to hate on him. I don't think he's as bad as people make him out to be, but um, a little bit less exciting, obviously. And then Super Saiyan 3, Barak is a fantastic unit as well. And then you go over to the Cell Banner here and some of the best extreme units in the game. Um, Physical Broly, um, Int, Goku Black, that turns into Rosé, uh, STR Super Boo, this guy again, STR Rosé, and so on and so forth. So yeah, great, great value just all around for various reasons. Definitely, if you guys are looking for like the thing to save your stones for every single time, um, to get the best value out of them, I would definitely say wait for Dual Dokkan Fest. Now they are kind of rare, I think every year we only get about 2-3 to three of them. Uh, one for the anniversary, one for the download celebration, and then usually like one random one in between, either for some kind of big event or just just a random thing that like they like to throw in there. So two to three per year. So they're not too, uh, they don't occur too often, which actually is a good thing if you guys want to save stones for them because it gives you some time in between to accumulate accumulate stones, right? So uh, yeah, dual Dokkan Fests are amazing. Absolutely love them. And uh, best value for your stones in this game, in my opinion. All right, once again, my opinion, you guys can disagree if you want, but they're awesome. I love these things. And next up, let's talk about legendary summon banners. And this one might be a little bit uh, polarizing for some people because I know some people love them, some people hate them. I'm kind of somewhere in the middle on this topic. So I think that for most people, these banners are not good value. So one thing is that these legendary summon banners do not include any Dokkan Fest exclusive unit. All right. So you know, the SDR Dynamic Goku or the AGL LR Gohan and so on and so forth are not going to be on these banners, but they do include every single non Tokan Fest exclusive LR in the game. And uh, usually there's going to be one new one that's featured like this full power Frieza here. And then the rest of them will be in the unfeatured pool. As you can see, we got the LR Androids, we got the LR GT Trio, we got Tech LR Broly and so on and so forth. If you scroll down, they're all going to be in there. So that's kind of the thing that gets a lot of people. I'm not going to lie, I, I fall for it all the time, right? But the thing is, even though you, you look at these LRs and you might be tempted when you see some people pull like three to four LRs in a multi on these banners, the chances of pulling out an a, a LR on these banners is still fairly low. I mean, even for the featured LR, you're looking at a one out of 12 chance because they always load up these banners with a bunch of featured SSRs so that your chances of pulling the main featured LR is still quite low. If you do the math with a 5% feature rate, it's about 0.416% chance of pulling this LR Frieza, which is really not great. That's really not a very good rate. And then you look at the unfeatured units. I mean, of course, there are a fair amount of unfeatured uh, you know, LRs, right? Um, there's in total 198 in the unfeatured pool. So it's still not a great chance there either. And while you have a chance of pulling you know, two LRs in a multi or like multiple LRs, like in consecutive multis or something like that. Totally happened to people I know, not to me, but people I know. But um, you could also easily go a thousand plus stones without pulling an LR at all, which is also something that has happened to me in the past. So uh, you got to be careful with these banners. I would say it, it, it wouldn't hurt to do maybe two or three multis, like a couple multis, test your luck and see if you do get lucky and pull an LR on these banners, but I wouldn't go too crazy on them if you're not a big whale. Um, if you are a whale, then you don't really need this video anyways, right? Since you already can buy as many stones as you want, but if you're just like a free-to-play player or someone that like only spends money on this game every so often, um, I would say a couple multis at most save most of your stones for the Dokkan Fest banners and also the dual Dokkan Fest banners especially. So that's my opinion on the Legendary Summon banners. I know I'm a little bit of a hypocrite because I spent 3,000 stones on the LR Androids banner when they came out, but I really, really wanted them, guys. All right, so don't, don't judge me. Okay, so that's a Legendary Summon banner. And then next up, one step up is the top Legendary Summon banner. And I think we've only received two of these so far. If I'm remembering correctly, I think we've only had two top Legendary Summon banners, and these are exactly the same 
as a regular Legendary Summon Banner, except for the fact that there are two featured LRs uh, instead of one. So double the chance of pulling an LR in theory, uh, at least featured LR, because uh, they will have the same number of featured uh, SSRs. So we have 12 here, but two of them are non Dokkan Fest LRs. So you're looking at a 0.832% chance, I believe, if my math is correct. Yeah, 832% chance of pulling an LR from the featured pool, and then same chance of pulling from the unfeatured pool. So in, in that sense, definitely better value on these top legendary summon banners, but these are very rare because so far we've only received two of them. Um, we could be getting more in the future, like as we go on, maybe this will become the trend, the norm. But uh, as of right now, based on the information I have available to me, these are kind of rare, so don't expect them too much. And um, of course, they are better value. They are better to summon on than just the one featured LR. But still, I, I still don't think they have as much value as, you know, Dokkan Fest banners. And I would still save most of my stones for those banners and the Dual Dokkan Fest as opposed to this. But you could probably feel a little bit better about dropping a few more stones on a top legendary summon banner, especially if you need the featured LRs. And, um, you know, potentially get really lucky and pull a ton of unfeatured LRs too, right? Definitely could happen. I've seen some guy pull like four LRs in a multi, but that's the kind of luck that. I mean, you can't really expect, right? I mean, you're more likely to probably get struck by lightning multiple times than pull four LRs in the same multi. I'm just saying. Okay, next up, more LR stuff. This is the uh, Double Rates banner, Rising Dragon Carnival banner. And uh, these Rising Dragon Carnival banners, as the Double Rates you know, moniker implies, they give you double the SSR rate. So instead of a 10% total SSR rate, it's a 20% total SSR rate. 10% for featured, 10% for normal, and these banners usually won't feature an LR. They have featured LRs before, but usually they just feature a bunch of random um, non token FS units, and what people are going for really is the unfeatured pool where all the LRs are there, and since you have a double rate, the 10% rate instead of a 20% rate of pulling something, um, your chances of pulling any general LR is also higher too. But the thing is, if you guys are going for a specific LR, these banners are actually not the greatest because all the all the LRs have the same uh, rates, right? So if you want like specifically LR Goku and Frieza or LR Tech Broly, then there are better options for uh, summoning them. So I wouldn't really go too hard on these banners either. But if you're okay with just pulling any LR, like you're like, I don't care what LR I get, I'll be happy with anything, then this might not be a bad idea to chase some LRs because you do have the double rates. Um, but a lot of the times, guys, I I'm gonna be honest, you're probably just gonna be like, you're probably just gonna end up with a bunch of random unfeatured SSRs that are not LRs that they, that, that might as well honestly just be SRs or just Baba points straight up because there's not much you can do with them, right? So I think, I think this might be a much better option if you're a fairly new player. If you don't have a lot of units in this game and you just want to build up your, um, I guess, inventory or your box of like SRs you can run, or SSRs rather, you can run on different category teams and stuff like that, then it might be a better option. But if you've been playing for a while, you already have a lot of the unfeatured units. Um, unfeatured non token fist units in the game, then not the greatest option, I think, for your stones. I think if you guys are looking for specific LRs, then definitely save them for uh, the type banners. Or, you know, if you're looking for the specific LR that's featured on a legendary summon banner, that's a better option too. So, yeah, for these ones, it's a little bit iffy. Um, it's very exciting to see the double rates and see people pull a ton of LRs and stuff on these banners but I still wouldn't go too hard on them. I don't think they're the greatest value for your stones, unless you're okay with pulling any LR in general or you're a fairly new player without a lot of SSRs at all, right? So that's the double rates banner right there, Rising Dragon Carnival. And next up is the Extreme Z Dokkan Festival. I'm not gonna spend too much time on these banners, but basically they will always feature the uh, new Dokkan Fest unit that got an Extreme Z Awakening and then two other units um, that I think are related to, I believe related to the Extreme Z battle in some way. Anyways, um, for this banner, it's the uh, Int Buhan Extreme Z Awakening banner. And of course we have Int Buhan, and then we have the SSJ3 physical Gotenks and also the physical uh, Vegito Blue. And 
The thing with these banners is that if you really, really want the new Extreme Z Awakened unit, then your rates of pulling him are actually very good since there's only three featured units and a regular 5% rate, right? But unless you really want them, I don't think it's the best value for your stones either. I usually tell people to skip these because there's probably going to be some way for you to acquire them at some point in the future. Like if you don't need them like right now, then you can like wait a little bit. I would say wait because you'll have other options. Like for example, the um, download celebration ticket banner will feature all these guys in the future, right? So you get that every year. Um, there's also the red dragon stone, which I think honestly will eventually allow us to pick up these 70% leads too. It's going to take some time, but um, I think eventually they'll be added to the red dragon stone pool as well. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but that's just what I'm feeling. Um, and obviously all the other like older extremes, the awakening units, like the Int Janemba, the STR Gogeta, the... Um, you know, Super Saiyan 3, Vegeta, and so on and so forth are all available with the Red Dragon Stones. So if you're looking for those guys, then just wait for the Red Dragon Stone to become available again, right? So those are the Extreme Z Dokkan Festival banners. Like I said, if you if you really, really must have the new EZA unit, then go for it. But otherwise, I would wait. And next up are category banners. And the way these work is they feature only units of a certain category. So this one is for Patara, but there's ones uh, for hybrid Saiyans or Super Saiyans and so on and so forth. And I would just say straight up skip these banners. I mean, the, the featured units are not bad. Don't get me wrong. Like Kefla is great. This Int Zamasu is great. This guy kind of sucks, but if he gets an Extreme Z Awakening, he'll be good too. And Int Vegeta is kind of, he's okay. He's an okay support. She's a great support for uh, Realm of Gods, I believe. Realm of Gods, yes. So uh, yeah, fe the featured units are not bad, but they're available on every other banner as non-unfeatured uh, units. So you could always potentially just pull them when you're summoning for other things on like Tokon Fest banners or Legendary Summon banners. And uh, also, they're not great banners to chase, SS ch chase LRs on, even though they're all in there because the featured SSR at the end of the multi is always, or sorry, the guaranteed SSR at the end of the multi is always a featured SSR. So when it comes to legendary summon banners, a lot of people will pull the LRs on the final slot, that guaranteed slot. But for this, these kinds of banners where the guaranteed SSR is always a featured SSR, their rates of pulling an LR is it's just much lower, so I just don't think it's worth it. I don't think the value is there. Um, even with the 30 Dragonstone discount for the first three multis, I still don't think it's worth it. So, totally up to you guys, of course, um, but don't do it, okay? <laughs> so next up, we have the type banners. And uh, there's, of course, the tech type, AGL type, physical type, and so on and so forth, int and um, STR that I don't think I put here, but um, all every single type has their own banner. And for the past like year and a half or so, they've come in this form. Basically, uh, only for major celebrations will we get these. And you can only do one multi, and you get 4,000 orbs of the specific type of banner. Like for this one, you get physical orbs. For the other one, you get like, you know, AGL orbs or tech orbs between the multi. And uh, sometimes you get Kai's, depending on which banner it is. And of course, it only includes, like these banners only include uh, that type of banner. So, or sorry that type of unit. So for the AGL banner, it only includes AGL units, the tech banner only includes tech units, and so on and so forth. And uh, they also have exclusive units in the supports. So for the AGL banner, there's the AGL Pan, who is a uh, super AGL support, and then her counterpart is this uh, extreme AGL Metal Rildo. And then for the tech banner, there's the super tech support uh, Tien, and then the uh, extreme tech support uh, second form cell and every banner has those um, So as far as these banners go, they're actually very good for chasing specific types of LRs and um, The reason for that is because there's only one type of unit, right? So the uh, Overall SSR pool is much smaller. So even though the LRs are not featured in the banner in the unfeatured pool, there's the LR Goku and Frieza here, there's the LR Broly, there's the LR Goku Black, and there's also the LR Super Saiyan 3 Goku, right? I mean, this guy becomes Super Saiyan 3 Goku right here. So 
because it's such a small pool of SSR units and there's four LRs, you have more than a one in 10 chance for the uh, guaranteed SSR slot on this multi to be an LR, which is pretty much as good as it gets, man, for chasing specific LRs. So um, if you guys are looking for specific types of LRs, like the you know LR uh, LR Broly here, or maybe for the AGL banner, you really want uh, LR Baby, or I don't know LR Maja Vegeta, for example, or LR Mighty Mask. And those banners, like these type banners, are actually very good for you. And for the orbs too, I think it's worth the multis. Um, for the physical banner, of course, there are uh, LR Cell, LR Bardock, and LR Trunks. Is there another one missing? I think that's it. So yeah, um, yeah, great for chasing LRs of the specific type. Great for getting the orbs. But recently on JP, they released Awakenings for the Int Gohan and the Scouter Vegeta, which are the extreme and super Int supports from this banner, right? And their Awakenings are actually extremely, extremely good. Um, so if that is any, any indication of how the other, other ones will end up, then it's a very good sign, guys, because they are very, very much uh, top tier units, at least for non Tokan Fest units, right? So uh, yeah, they're awesome. And I think the same thing is gonna happen for the other supports too. And with uh, the release of their Dokkan Awakenings, they actually released the Int Banner without any restrictions on summons. So like I said, for the last year and a half or so, um, we've only been able to summon one time on these banners for the orbs. And um, that's pretty much it. Like once you do the one multi, the banners disappear. But now we can finally do unlimited summons on these banners again. And this was kind of the norm before like the whole orb thing started, I believe. But now we can do unlimited summons on the int banner on JP, and I'm assuming that this will become a thing for the other banners as well once the uh, token awakenings come out for the other type supports too. So that's a good sign. And like I said, these banners are very good for chasing the specific type of LR you want. So for the int type uh, banner, you can get the LR Go, uh, as long as it go bros, uh, LR uh, GT trio, int LR Gohan, and also LR Bojack. So if you are missing any of these guys, you really want them, then this is not a terrible banner to chase chase them on. And also get extra Kai's for doing multis. Um, and also these supports are extremely, extremely good, like I said. So um, this, one, this one is a bit of a difficult one, but I would say value-wise, it's actually better than legendary summon banners if you are going for the specific type of LR that these banners have, right? But otherwise, um, Treat it similarly, I guess, to a legendary summon banner. Don't go too crazy. Couple multis when they come around, um, but save most of your stones still for the Tokon Fest or dual Tokon Fest banners. And next up is this crossover summon, and these units are really cool. So I, I would say they're all good units for sure. All these Dragon Ball Heroes units are very, very good units, but I wouldn't say any of them are must-haves. All right, none of them are needed to run a new category. Um, none of them are, you know, mandatory to like clear any events or anything like that. They're just really good units with like specific uses. Like this guy's a really good tank. He hits really hard. She's a good support. Um, and these two are good supports for Vegeta's family and Goku's family, and also the other ones here. They're always like good. They're all good in their own way, but none of them are must-haves. That's what I'll say. So summon if you want the units, but you can also feel free to skip it without too much guilt. I'd say you, you won't lose too much um, not summoning on them. Although to be fair, there are more heroes units on the way and maybe the new ones they release are absolutely insane and you must summon on them to like get, get the units. But as far as the ones we have right now, I would say they're good. They're very good, but uh, not must summons by any means. Oh, one, one thing to note, of, of course, is that it's one featured SSR guaranteed per multi. So if you really want these units, your chance of getting them are, are quite high, right? And what else do we have here? Oh, we also have the Mysterious Ritual um, Elder Kai banners. And these banners are very subjective. If you guys really, really need Kai's, then go for it. 25 stones for five Kai's is not the worst deal, but it's also not a great deal. I personally have never summoned on an Elder Kai banner and I've been fine, so I would say just be patient and wait for events and missions and stuff like that to 
um, get the Kai's. Obviously, always farm the items for the Baba Shop to like exchange for Kai's when they become available. Uh, don't be lazy for that. Um, and you should be fine. I don't think it's necessary to summon on Elder Kai banners, but if you guys are like really, really in a rush to raise an LR to SA20 or raise a new Dokkan Fest unit to SA10, then I guess go for it. It's up to you. And next up, we have the ever so elusive step up banner. And Global has only received this once um, last year during, or was it early this year? Either the end of last year or beginning of this year. Um, and JP got it twice already. And essentially the way it works is there's five steps. Um, for the new year one, we got two rounds. I think JP, the second time it came around, only had one round. Step one is 20 stones for a Extreme Z Awakenable unit. Step two is 40 stones for a super type leader. And I believe it was only a 120 lead or um, physical Vegito Blue. And then for the 40, uh, for the third step, it's 40 stones for an Extreme type leader. And the fifth or the fourth step is 50 stones for a guaranteed category leader. And then step five gives you a guaranteed LR unit, guys. I mean, it didn't include every single LR in the game in there, but it had most of them. And the fact that we had a banner that guarantees you an LR still blows my mind, man, because I still remember the days. I still remember the days when people were going thousands, like three, four thousand stones trying to pull one copy of LR Gohan or LR Broly or something like that. And we have come a long way from there where you can get a guaranteed LR in 200 stones. So that's just... That's crazy to me, man. That is absolutely crazy to me. So that is the step up banner. I do think we're going to get another one this year on both Global and JP at some point. Um, it's just a matter of when. And I mean, I think it goes without saying. This is the must summon, guys. Like you, you have to summon on the step up banner when it comes around. It doesn't matter who you are. I mean, unless you're, you're unless you're Truth or I don't know, like some other massive whale out there that has every LR rainbowed or most of them rainbowed. Um, I think the value here is very apparent for everybody and uh, just summon on this banner when it comes out, man. No matter what, no matter what you're saving for, you can spare the 200 stones for a guaranteed LR and also a guaranteed category lead. I mean, these first three steps are not the most exciting, but you can still get LRs on these steps too. So uh, yeah, overall, just amazing value on this banner. Definitely summon on it when it becomes available uh, once again because it's probably going to be a one to two times a year thing, so you don't want to miss out, guys. You don't want to miss out. And I think that is, that's pretty much it. Yeah, that is, that is it. That's everything I have prepared to talk about in this video. And I think that about covers every type of banner in this game. Now, obviously, there are some like... Every once in a while, I think we'll get like a special one or uh, just like the thank you celebration one that's kind of different, but those are kind of outliers, I'd say. And uh, of course, I didn't talk about any like non-stone banners, like ticket banners out there because that's not really the topic at hand. I was this, the, the point of this video is to kind of inform people about the different kinds of banners you can spend your stones on and whether or not I feel like they're worth your stones. So hopefully I was able to accomplish a part of I've been talking way too much in today's video, man. Oh my god. Hopefully, I've been able to accomplish that. And hopefully, I was able to help a few people out there. And I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video because um, I feel like I put a good amount of effort into it. So, you better enjoy it. I'm just kidding. Anyways, guys. <laughs> As always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that is pretty much all I gotta say in this video. Um, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for watching. I know this was a long one, but... If you guys made it to the end then you are the true the real mvps just like uh this guy right here mvp 17 that's you all right if you're still watching this after 30 plus minutes you're the real mvp all right so <laughs> until next time guys i hope you have a fantastic fantastic day i'm tiger with tiger uppercut media signing out